Grinny, Zimmer. I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum is fast gaining the confidence of Diogenes Smith with his work as circulation manager for the pamphlets that Diogenes prints on his presses back in the feed room of the Jotham Down store. Lum is also pretty confident that he's a cinch for the $10,000 prize Diogenes is offering to Pine Ridge's most model citizen. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Lum has just returned from lunch. Listen. Well, dog, is it's about time you was getting back, Lum. You must have uh, had an awful big lunch to take so long. Yeah, I wasn't eating all that time, Abner. I, I run into Ezra Seastrung down to the rest in there, and him and me had an executive business meeting. Chamber of Commerce stuff. Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, Ezra got to tell them how all the big towns has appointed air raid wardens to keep watch on everything and tell the people what to do in case there's an air raid and all that stuff. What? So, we figured we ought to find one here in Pine Ridge. Uh, who, who are we going to pine? He's already been pining. It's, well, it's me. You? Yeah, we figured as long as Ezra was president of the school board and I was just as a piece, it was our duty to hold our meeting and do the pining. Uh-huh. So, he nominated himself and I nominated myself and then we voted. Kept coming out a tie. That's what taking so long. Well, how did you finally win out, Mom? Well, Ezra couldn't stay no longer. He had to get back to the place. So after he'd win, I taken the vote once more and see if we could get somebody elected. And I done the voting for both of us and come out unanimous for me. Well, dog, as I wished I'd have known about that. I'd like to get pinted or something like that, Mom. Uh, now, exactly what does an air raid warden do? Well, I ain't sure what all I got to do, but Ezra said he knowed where he could get a paper or a book or something from the giver man that tells all what to do. Well, good for Ezra. I know one thing, though. I got to find a lot of watchers. Watchers? Yeah, them fellas that stays up and watches for our planes going over at night and stuff. At night? Well, why don't you have them do it in the daytime? Be a heap easier to see the our planes in the daytime long. Well, natural, but we got to keep watch both day and night. Oh, I figured I might pint Mousy for a watcher at night. Mousy? Yeah, he's used to setting up at night since he worked at that night watching job over the mill for so long. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be a good one. At least ways he can stay awake. Oh, sure, sure. And then there's Diogenes. Might as well get him as long as he's up half the night anyway. Yeah, but he's too busy printing them pamphlets on <laughs> honesty and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I re... All right, Douglas, wait a minute. That reminds me, Mom. You're supposed to take another package of pamphlets to the county seat today. Today? Yeah, yeah. Well, for goodness sakes, why didn't you tell me? Huh? Granny's, it's too late to catch the mail hack now. More than likely, I'll lose my job as circulation manager now. It's all on account of you. Well, now, don't get excited, Mom. Cedric's going to drive you in there. Cedric? Yeah, yeah, he'll be around about an hour to pick you up, Dodging, he said. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Yeah, I better be getting the pamphlets and my instructions from Dodge and he's in. Where is he at? Back in the feed room? No, no. He went over to Sister Simpson's boarding house. Said he worked right now all night long and wanted to get a little sleep for himself. Sleep? Yeah. Well, Granny, how am I going to get my instructions and the pamphlets now? I can't leave here two minutes without you getting everything mixed well, up. Well, now, Long, Long, just a minute now. The package of pamphlets is sitting right there on the counter. And Dodge and he's told me the instructions to you. Told them to you? Yeah, yeah. Well, now, he oughtn't to do that. Them instructions is secret stuff, just twixt him and me. What did he tell you? Well, he said you were supposed to meet the same fella at the depot that you met the other time. At the depot, huh? Yeah. Wear the same red ribbon in your coat and give the same secret password. Oh. Light the lantern, friend. Wait a minute. You ain't supposed to know that, Abner. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I told you that, but I told you not to never mention it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Forgot, forgot. And the next time Dodge and East comes in here with some secret instructions for me, tell him to write them out so you can't hear them. Grannies, I don't want everybody in town. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's some 
Squire Skimp up out there. Squire? Yeah, no, right there, right there. Better not let him know I'm making this trip. Oh, no, no. Better not even let him know I'm circulation manager for Dodge and either, or he'll steady up some way to get the job away from me. I ain't going to tell him nothing. You know me, old helping hand, Abner. Er, and I reckon I don't need to say that to you no more now that I know you ain't one of the deputies. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to be so careful neither, for I know you ain't no deputy. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Find out, here he comes. Yeah. He might be one. Yeah, you can't tell. Well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, come on in, Squire. Wonderful world. Yes, wonderful world, gentlemen. Well, it is indeed a pleasure to see you. Well, uh, thank you, Squire. What can we do for you today? Oh, nothing, nothing at all, um. I just dropped in to donate these things to your victory boxes. Uh, here's a bundle of newspapers and several toothpaste tubes. Well, good for you, Squire. And uh, here's a pair of brass candlesticks that Miss Kemp said she wanted to contribute to the cause, too. Well, that's mighty thoughty of her. Yeah, the government needs all this stuff it can get. Oh, yes, yes. Well, by George, you've got quite a collection there so far, haven't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Everybody's cooperating awful good. Yeah. Some stuff there they don't need, I reckon, but it's nice of them to bring it down anyway. Yeah, it shows the right spirit. That's yeah. right. Ms. Bates and Ms. Weehunt and Ms. McMillan, everybody's bringing stuff in for our victory boxes for defense. Well... Ms. Barton drove clean in here from her place just to bring in some old rubber boots or youngins that outgrow. Yeah, and Grandpa Masters got up out of a sick bed to bring in an alarm clock. Said he figured there might be some metal of some kind in there they could use. Oh, they brought all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Everybody's doing their bit. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Lum. And I also want to congratulate you on your new position as air raid warden. Well, how did you know I'd been pointed to that, Squire? Oh, uh, Moe's Moods told me down at the restaurant just now, Lum. And I must say I'm glad to see that Pine Ridge is taking such precautions right now. This is a time when we must all be on the alert. Yes, sir, you're right, Squire. In fact, we can't be too cautious. I was just reading in one of those newspapers I brought in here how an apparently harmless-looking man was caught in a depot carrying explosives. Carrying explosives right in a depot? Oh, well, he had them wrapped up in an innocent-looking package. Uh, well, like, it looked about like a package there on your counter. You mean that one sitting on it? Yes, yes. Well, I didn't know. And they also found some directions in the package telling how to reach a certain reservoir in some big city. I don't recall just where it was now. But anyway, the police have him, and he'll do no more damage. Jeez, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I've got to get on over the place, man. Uh, don't forget, so long. You can count on me for any help that you need in your new defense work. Now, thank you, Squire. I appreciate it. I know we can use you. Yes, well, wonderful world. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. Granny Abner, I believe down deep inside, that Squire's all right, you know. He might be. Seems like no matter what kind of a person a feller is, again, our country gets in something like this, the best comes out in him, and he's ready to do all he can to help. Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, Mom, did you hear him say that that package of explosives looked like the package at Dodge and he's left for you to take to the county seat? Yeah, he said it looked like that one that you got sitting on the counter over there. I heard him. Yeah, sir, I've just been looking at that package. And I just been a wonder. Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner. Don't let that imagination of yours get to working again. Now, them are pamphlets in that package. How do you know it's all sealed up? Well, I know what's in them, though. I've taken packages just like that to the county seat in Fort Smith, and nothing's happened, has it? Did you see what was in them packages you carried? Well, no, but... Granny, Abner, you don't suppose... Oh, no, that's silly. <laughs> Dodge, you need wouldn't do nothing like that. Not the way he stands up for honesty and right living. Yeah, of course, we don't actually know a whole lot about him, Mom. No, but Abner, go over there and listen to that package. Listen to it? Yeah, see if you can hear anything ticking. I've heard about some kind of explosives that tick that away. Yeah, well, you, you better go over and listen, Mom. Uh, my, my hearing ain't very good here, lady. Your hearing's all right. It's sort of like a time bomb whenever they're in there. Go on uh, over and do as I say. No, sir, now, I ain't going to get close to that thing long. Abner, it's my duty to find out what's in that package. I'm the air raid warden around here. Now, go on over there and listen to it. Or I'll report you to somebody. I don't know who, but somebody. 
Mm, all right, but I'm feared I'm too shaky to hear anything. Uh, don't tiptoe. The package can't hear you, silly. I is this close enough? Well, can you hear anything from there? Well, I don't... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Come here, listen. Come here, listen, listen. Can you hear that ticking? Oh, my goodness. I was scared of this. Uh -huh. Quick, Abner, douse it in some water. Hurry up. Water? Where's some water? I don't know. Wait a minute. Where's that bucket of water you're using to wash the windows with? Right there, right there by the stove there. Well, hurry up. Throw the package in there before it explodes. No, you do it, Long. For goodness sake, Abner, hurry up. Well, all right. Here it goes. Watch out, Long. That's the time. Hi, right, doggies. That was a close one. Yeah, lucky thing I kept my head and knowed what to do. Oh, my, yeah. Better stand back here by the counter, Abner. That thing's still liable to float a little. Yeah, or I believe I'll call up Elizabeth and tell her how I say it. Wait a minute, Long. What's the matter? Hey, doggies, I, I can still hear that thing ticking. Listen. Oh, my goodness. There'll be another bomb around here someplace. Wait a minute. Look at there on the counter. Huh? You crazy idiot. You never heard nothing in that package. I did done it, and I still hear it, too. You're hearing that alarm clock sitting there on the counter that was behind the package. Thank <laughs> you.